You want to buy land near Dallas, Texas, but how do you choose the best location? In this video, I'm going to share with you the best way to start your search and also some helpful resources that will help you research. Hey y'all, I'm Tina Brinkus. I'm a local real estate agent in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I'm also a landowner in Texas. And I'm going to be sharing our journey as we build our house and our Airbnb, dealing with county and city permits, property taxes, ag exemptions, all the really fun stuff. So if you have questions, you should definitely reach out to me. I'm happy to answer anything. And you could even comment below on this video. I'd be happy to answer there as well. And if you're looking to buy land near Dallas, reach out to me. I will help you. So let's get to the best way that you can start your search for land near Dallas, and that is to start with the county. Why start with the county? There's two reasons, property taxes and building restrictions. They are the first things that you should be considering before you choose the city and exact location that you want to live in. When you start your search for land by going to the county first, you find out if that area is going to suit your needs and if you're comfortable with the property taxes, because property taxes cost a certain amount of money and the rates are different in different counties and also by city. I'm sure a lot of you understand that, but it's that's why it's so important to start there. If a county is not gonna suit your needs for what you want, then you either will want to alter that plan or move to the next county and pick a location based on your exact needs. So that's why it is so extremely important to start with a plan. And I have another video that is, will help you with a checklist that helps you go through all the things that you should be considering when you're making your plan to buy land. It, until you start making that plan, you may not really realize all the details that are involved. It isn't as simple as just, hey, I wanna build a house and have a big backyard. That's a great place to start. But when you sit down and rank in importance what you need and what you want and what are not negotiable or what are the non-negotiables for you it'll be much smoother and easier to do your research because you know exactly what you want if you're considering texas i'm sure you've heard a lot about property taxes uh, right now texas ranks about seventh uh, in highest property taxes out of the united states out of all the states and we also are one of seven states that do not have a personal state income tax. And that is the main reason why the property taxes are high in Texas. Property taxes pay for our services. It's how we fund our police and our ambulance and our public education. And in fact, the bulk of your property taxes go towards public education. If schools and school districts are not all that important to you because maybe your kids are grown, maybe you don't have kids, maybe you're retired, and you're not having kids yet. If school district is not important to you, then you do not need to live in one of these counties or cities within the county that have the higher school district tax rates. It's really that simple. So let's why don't we let's open up the map and I'll take you around uh, a couple of the counties and we can sort of compare rates and start a conversation so you can start your research. One of the websites I like to use is propertytax101.org slash Texas. And I'm gonna link all of the websites uh, that I'm going to be visiting in the description. So the cool thing about this website and there's a lot of websites like this. You know, you can go to the individual county websites, which I highly recommend and will recommend because that's where you're going to get the exact information that you're looking for. This, I like this because that uh, <laughs> I just like a visual. The map is the entire state and anything that is in blue has lower property taxes. And anything that is going towards a red color is high. And so you can easily look at the state by county on this map and you can tell um, what's going on. Over here, uh, this is not near 
enough to Dallas, in my opinion, but King County is the most expensive county property tax wise in the state of Texas. So see, that's the other cool thing. When you highlight a county, Dallas County, it gives you the current median price that people pay for property taxes in Dallas County. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll click on Dallas County. And uh, so there it's now it's in yellow because we're inside of it. And what they're telling us is that Dallas County is 15th out of the 254 counties in Texas when it comes to property taxes. And that it's telling us is that the median price that people are going to pay for property tax in Dallas County is $2,827. Now, as you can see over here, that's based on a home value that is $129,700. And I would say, I would argue it's very difficult to find a home at that price anywhere in the country right now. And so that is a median because we're taking everything into consideration. And we're also talking about land, right? The property tax is calculated based on the value of your property, whether it has a home or not. So it could just be the land or it could be the land and the home and they combine the values. Okay, so for Dallas County, the rate is 2.18%. How does that sound? <laughs> may, may sound kind of high uh, to some people. Um, the Let's, let's just do the math on 2.18. So let's say your property is worth $400,000 times 2.18%. That's $8,720 in property taxes that you would pay for a year. I don't know how that sounds to you. Might sound like a lot. Might not sound as shocking to others. So let's take that. 8720 and divide it by 12. $726 a month. So most people roll in their property taxes to their mortgage payment. So this tax rate on a $400,000 house is going to increase your mortgage every month by $726. Maybe that sounds manageable to you. <laughs> And maybe it sounds like something that you don't need to worry about. But to some people, it might be of concern. And so that's why I also just want to say something else about property tax that I'm going to do a whole other video about property tax just to make sure everyone understands. In Texas, you can protest your property taxes. We are in the middle of doing it right now. You receive your appraisal value from the appraisal district in the county, and they put in a, a market value on what they think your property is worth. Well, it is almost always more <laughs> than you might think it's worth. And so there is a process in place. It's on the notice that you get for your property taxes for you to protest because you can go back and explain why you think your home should not be valued as high. And so that's going to save you in property taxes. And there's a whole process. And so that's just good to know, right? So um, more on that in another video. I'm going to deep dive on that. It's going to be really exciting. <laughs> okay, so that's Dallas County. and But most likely, if you are considering buying a larger piece of property, you're probably not going to live in Dallas County. Most of the land is outside Dallas County. Now, you can find an acre... You can even find two acres. It's just, you're gonna be probably closer to suburbs and city. You're gonna be in a neighborhood. You know, you might be getting a lot that is just an empty lot that someone has owned maybe as an investment for a long time. Maybe they own the lot next to theirs. You know, you can still find a really neat uh, lot of land in the city of Dallas actually and the county, but it just takes a little looking. So I, I'm trying to help you compare counties, right? So Dallas County, right? That's Dallas County. Well, to the north is everybody's fave, Collin County. Now you see the difference there just in the numbers. 2827, 4351. Median property tax that you're going to pay in Collin County. Let's go into Collin County. 
Collin County is really popular because some of the biggest, most popular cities are in Collin County. Uh, Frisco, Plano, Richardson, McKinney, Prosper. It, the list is growing in Collin County of the cities that people are really excited to live in, and it's understandable. So here's our, so Collin County is number two in most expensive property taxes and all of 254 counties in the state of Texas. Impressive, right? Well, the tax rate is 2.19, the median. Now, in Dallas County, we just saw it was 2.18. So that's pretty close, isn't it? They're saying the median home value, again, 199, you know, you're not really most likely going to find anything in that price range. I'm <laughs> just saying. They're just looking at what already owned property, right? And and so it's a median of everything from, you know, the tiniest plot with a old house up to acreage and million dollar homes, multi-million dollar homes. Okay. So Collin County, I told you, Frisco, you know, is very most popular. The next county to the north is Grayson. You see the difference? <laughs> uh, 4351, 1519. Let's just do a little pop into Grayson quickly. And you know, you can do this all day. It's really, it's actually quite interesting if you're, if you're looking and you're interested. I thoroughly enjoy it, but that's my job. <laughs> so the tax rate is 1.53. So another way to think about this is the less your home is valued, even if you have a high property tax rate, you're going to pay less, right? Because it's just numbers. But if you think about having, you know, a 600, say you have a $600,000 really neat 10 acre piece of land times the property tax of 1.53%, that's $9,000 on $600,000. So, and divide that by 12, if you're paying it monthly, $765, comparable to the $400,000 property that you would have had in Dallas County. Okay, so as you can see, you know, so that's Grayson, it's the next county north, and I'll show you, I'll show you on the map. So. Dallas, the city, the heart of Dallas, is 30, about 28 to 30 miles from the heart of Frisco, Texas. Okay? So, you think about that, that's a pretty short drive, isn't it? And, uh, uh, and since Frisco and Plano and Prosper have become so popular and a lot of people want to live there, it is becoming the new center of the Metroplex. It's not going to happen, it has happened and continues to happen. And the growth in North Texas is so impressive and there's so much room to grow and that's why it's so exciting, uh, the thought of moving to Texas because there's so much opportunity in North Texas. And you don't have to live in the most expensive county if you do not want to. So, Okay, so if you think about Frisco being the new heart of the Metroplex and the fact that it is only 20 mile, 28 miles due north, due north, straight up the 75 freeway, think about Frisco. And if you only want to be, say, 30 minutes from Frisco, well, that starts to put you into a different county, which is pretty cool. So let's look at um, here. This is... map okay so here's Frisco right and it's in Collin one of the very first really neat towns that is in Grayson County is Van Alstine well if you look Van Alstine is 35 miles from the heart of Frisco and in Texas most likely when you are driving, you're driving on a highway. And if it's 30 miles away, it takes 30 minutes to get there. 
I don't know about everyone where you live now, but I used to live in Los Angeles. And if I had to go five miles, it could take 30 minutes. <laughs> Not always, but most often. And um, you're really happy when you get to drive on a highway. And in Texas, there's a lot of room to drive. You know, there's a lot of people and uh, there's it's getting busier and more people are moving here. But when you think about if you really want to be doing business or you have a job or you want to be socializing and be near Frisco, this is in Grayson County. And there is a lot going on even north of Van Alstine, which I will quickly talk about and I will also talk about in another video is Sherman, Texas, also Grayson County. Texas Instruments has built a brand new facility out there and there is new construction, new home construction going on in Sherman and it is, it's happening. So that's north, right? And that is exciting, but you don't have to just go north. There's also west and east. So, okay, let's go back to um, the county map. And just, okay, so Collin, here's Grayson that we were just talking about. So back in Collin County, if you just go to the west, there's Denton County. And then west of Denton County, Wise County. That's where I live. And as you can see, 1788 in Wise County. So I'm going to talk more about uh, Wise County in another video. I'm going to be talking about all the counties um, to help you more uh, understand what the different counties have to offer. But it's good. This is such a great, to me, just looking at this helps so much because you think that the county is large and it is, but when you look at the maps and how far things are from each other and knowing that even from if you were to live in Van Alstine you could get to Dallas the heart of downtown Dallas in an hour so something to think about also so Collin County Dallas County Tarrant County that's where Fort Worth is and there's so much more to talk about and then with just one other I could do this all day I would point out that if you're going to look at east-west in Collin County, the very next county to the east is Hunt. Look at that. 1420 is the median property tax. Now, these areas are developing. And there's a lot of green and there's a lot of farm and there's a lot of room to grow. And so that's something to think about. This is the first time in Texas, in North Texas history, that this is happening. It's There's obviously been development. Frisco used to be the country, and now it is the center of the Metroplex. So, but when you start to look in these different counties surrounding Collin, I mean, great places to look. So, there, that's that map. Another cool website. I found where, and there are a lot of these, but this one's Smart Asset. You can type in your location by um, zip code and put in approximate assessed value of your property, and it will actually tell you. Okay, so here's this is a zip code in Plano, Texas. And then it tells you it's in Collin County. Average county tax rate is 1.89. And then the property taxes would be 6615 and that's based on i chose 350,000 cuz that seems like a pretty general number that people like to go for but you know hey if we're looking at you know 700,000 that's and as you can see the difference as you get into higher value of home you're paying more in property taxes okay that's a neat website i will link that one of the things i definitely think you must do is go to the individual county websites and that's the best way to search for the exact information that you're looking for because they publish everything they have to the counties have to provide you information about tax rates school districts city taxes it's all um, their government and they have to share that information so you can also pay your property taxes and protest your property taxes on these websites uh, one of my favorite things that you can do on these websites is you can actually look up a specific property and see how much that property owner has been paying 
in property taxes. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that's, I mean, you don't get any more straightforward than that. You know exactly what they paid uh, the previous, it's usually the previous year. Like we're in 2022 right now, so you're not gonna see the, uh, what they're paying for 2022 yet. But, um, let's look here. So the first thing I was talking about, you can actually view tax rates. Here's tax rate history. Uh, summaries, you know, truth in taxation, definitions, there's a lot in here. Uh, not sure if you'll want to see all of that, um, but it's it's very valuable. I mean, if you're looking to buy a property, you need to know where your tax is. Okay, see there, there's your big, um, wow, this is gonna blow your mind, right? So just quickly, this is Collin County, and then it breaks down like Allen. Allen is a city in Collin County, and it's got the city, the ISD, and here's Salina, which is a new up and coming already on its way city in Collin County that people are excited about. It's got the city taxes and uh, the school district taxes. So just know that you can go and look at that. And then property account lookup. This is kind of my favorite thing right now because so this is where you can plug in exact information and look up a property and see. So you have the option you know, to look up by different things. If you're the owner, you can put in your name. Uh, but it, since we are not the owner and we might just have an address, you're gonna do property location. So I have, uh, I'm just gonna look up, this is a random address, okay? In um, McKinney, 601. Okay, so I typed in an address in McKinney, and you just put in the number and the street, and it brings up everything associated with this street. And so we'll just randomly pick a, a home in this development. In this entry, you can see that they value the land and the improvement, which they consider the home separately, and then they combine those two numbers uh, for your taxes. And, um, you know, this is just 2021, and they paid $4,957.71 in property taxes in McKinney, Texas in 2021. So that's pretty cool. You can go to all years. Um, this is really neat. Look, I mean, you can go back and see what they've paid, and, uh, you know, so it gives you an idea. And, you know, the Property taxes change every year. They're, they're constantly reevaluating. They can only go up a certain percentage. So I just wanted you to see that how much information you can find just by going to the actual county website and looking up the tax, uh, the property tax there. So I just wanted you to see how much information you can get just by going to the county websites. And it gives you, you know, once you do that research, I know it seems very detailed and nitty gritty, but it's so important because it is your money and you want to know how far your money's going to go when it comes to paying property taxes. And uh, so it's a great place to start. And once you have the information, you're armed with it and you know, well, Collin County, you know, it's going to cost me this much, but really it's not that much more than say Denton County or Dallas County or Tarrant County. But if I just go up to Grayson or out to Cook or over to Wise, there's a significant difference. So just check it out. I will link uh, the Collin County Tax Assessor's website in the description. The next thing is you need to choose a city based on the restrictions that they may have for your build or for what you want to do on your land beyond your build. And what I mean is you may want to build a house and a pool and maybe just a garage and have a large backyard and that's great. But there are always some sort of ordinances or rules and they also call them restrictions which doesn't sound very positive about what you can build and the materials and the size. There's a minimum size of home you can build in certain areas, whether or not you can have animals, whether or not you can have a barn or an Airbnb or a guest house. So you can see how 
these things are really important and that's why your plan is really important. You need to know what you want. And if you don't want it now, what may you want in the future? Do you maybe want to have an Airbnb in your yard or have an Airbnb in the back of your property or have two? Or do you want to extend services? So you just, you need to know which city is going to accommodate you. Which brings me to city limits. When you choose a county and you choose a city, you can then choose whether or not you want to live inside city limits or outside city limits. And they both have their benefits and their drawbacks. If you live inside city limits, you are getting all of the city services that the city has chosen to offer you. So you just pay your taxes and they give you the services. Your water, you're, you're going to be tied into the city water system. This may seem obvious, but when you consider the other, which is outside city limits, it makes more sense. So you have your city water, city trash, electricity. In the town that we live in, everything's all tied in and you don't you don't get to choose anything. It's chosen for you and you pay your taxes and they pick up your trash. And that means that there are also rules and restrictions about what you can build, what type of uh, products you can use to build a structure. And uh, it can be more restrictive in a city. They just have more rules. So if you choose to live outside city limits, you're going to be following the county ordinances, which tend to be a little more flexible or there aren't as many generally. This is generally. Obviously, we're going to have to look at your individual county and city that you choose. We live just outside city limits. We get to choose which trash service we want and uh, which electric company we want to sign up with. That's another thing in Texas. You can, uh, here in Texas, you get to choose your electric uh, provider. It's not just automatic, which is kind of, it can be good because you can shop around for, you know, affordable. <laughs> you learn a little, a little bit too much about electricity. I can do another video about electricity if you're interested in me decide to have solar panels or maybe you go on a septic system you're not even tied into the city sewer and maybe you have a well and you have your home water or like we have here i'm in bridgeport texas in wise county and it's awesome we have a water co-op and so we get our water from them instead of the city so we actually really like being outside city limits because we also have land and we want to do what we want to do and it's more flexible and you don't need as many permits and I can do a whole nother video about this because we're dealing with it personally. So first you choose the county, then you choose your city and then you t choose whether or not you want to live inside city limits or outside city limits. So I know this is a lot of nitty gritty detail but I do think it's so important. It will just be so much easier to guide your search. You can evaluate every single piece of land based on what your needs are and whether or not that county and that city is going to offer that to you. And whether maybe you are willing to pay a little more property tax if you are, you know, if it's something that you really want. So that's it for today for your deep dive into how to start your search when you're looking for land near Dallas. Definitely reach out to me if you have questions, and I'd be very, very happy and humble to help you find a piece of land that's perfect for you and your family, so just give me a call.